What's up, guys? Welcome back to this mortgage series with Rina. <coughs> Hello, I'm back. <laughs> so, so bubbly after your Singapore trip, right? So, recently we have been uh, to mm. Singapore, both of mm. us. Mm. <coughs> Very, but not together, lah. Okay, not, not mm. together. Wow. Why does it matter? Not uh, <laughs> Why not purposely add a clause there? <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I was invited to speak there. So my, I think my exposure to the audience there is going to be very different from yours, right? And But a common thread that uh, after the trip we kind of discussed a little bit is uh, we realized a lot of Malaysians mm. that actually works in Singapore yep. tries to buy property in Malaysia. Mm. What are the documentation like? Right. So that's that kind of question that Yeah, yeah, you're, a lot you're, then you're, like you're. that's the moment it's like I don't know. Ask me now. <laughs> <laughs> then that's why I uh, this episode happened because of that. Anyway. Okay. How hmm. was Singapore? Wow. If talking about work trip, that that, that was actually my first time lah, to Singapore for work purpose. Hmm. Other than that, Where I went, went to Singapore like for holiday purpose lah. Hmm. I went two weeks ago, I think almost the the time you, you you went right uh, weeks after days after I went days uh, by go uh, by go day trip one ah uh, uh, mine was a two days trip uh, but mm. really a full back to back uh it's it's more to the work uh, on a corporate scheme and then to meet few of the clients that's based there working there mm. so I get to know really learn a lot mm. about first one Malaysian working in Singapore mm. the second one Malaysian PR I already got on the PR there. And uh, working in Singapore lah. And then the third one I get to know some of the Malaysian already converted mm. As a Singaporean mm-hmm. So particularly It's my friend also lah. Oh. Okay, so These three different category You will realise they have different Intention mm. And goals okay. Whether to invest in Malaysia or Singapore lah. Mm-hmm. So which also makes a difference On the documentation And the portfolio that I need to Build for them Because eventually let's say those Let's talk about the first one, Malaysian working in uh, Singapore. Mm. So we have got few where they just started there, mm. two years. So uh, the income average, uh, let's say four to five thousand Sing dollar. This is not considered a lot mm. uh, as mm-hmm. a really a, a beginner kind of a, a salary. So they have this stigma, right? Mm. Now everybody starts converting. With it. <laughs> Should Ooh, I? 5,000 Wow 16,000 eh Wow After conversion Sure a lot lah ah, yeah, But yeah. if let's say Talking about living expenses And to rent a house mm. In Singapore For 5,000 Sing dollar mm. Quite One third almost quite, Goes to rent really Yeah you're right Quite hard I find it mm. So of course This kind of category Of client Or people that I met right Their question mark is Rina Should I buy Should I own a HDB Here first mm. Or can I right now Start invest in Malaysia Mm. Because if you start to If you want to invest in Malaysia uh, so, Sorry If you want to own a HDB You mm. can't have any Ownership yeah. In yeah, other yeah. overseas country ma. So that is the root block mm. uh, Their question mark Which one should I do first Yep. Then the second one Where those You already have a PR status there You might have another partner mm. Another half So PR PR You can get a HDB ma, You can own ma. Yeah. So they are like Have a strong intention I want to have a HDB first. Mm. That's why right now I pause my investment in Malaysia until I get the HDB done. Mm. Uh, so it's like, why? Uh? Mm. HDB, I get to know that they need to put in at least 20 to 25. Yeah. Be it into own a BTO or a resale, right? Yeah. Let's say, for example, 500,000, 20%, 100,000 Sing dollar. Leh. But 5% cash. Uh, the rest is uh, CPF. CPF. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Provided CPF. But but got, got the money also. <laughs> so so it's uh, a lot of people will say uh. so like when I talk about it, what twenty five percent upfront a lot, right? Actually, mm. Malaysia lucky best leh. Mm, mm. So Malaysia, okay. Then they will say like, oh twenty percent is from CPF, which is a lot, ma. So mm. everybody can buy a house. Mm. Malaysia, you buy it. You take your SPA, go to KWSB, you can take out 10%. Same one. Mm, the mm. best thing is you put zero down, still can yeah. take out money. Le. Yeah, yeah. So, wow, to own one HDB, mm. it will require you a 20 to 25% down payment, be in you want to withdraw from CPF or, or you not. use your cash mm, or mm. not. Mm. La. Then there's a, another category, my friend. <sighs> Converted become a Singaporean. Mm, what you said? <laughs> <laughs> you should be happy, ma. <laughs> yeah. no, okay. like asking him, hey, why you convert become a Singaporean? Ah? Uh. He himself, he like, is a guy. Uh. He himself also like, I'm not sure whether I make a regret or not mm, for doing so. Mm, mm, mm. I ask 
really lah, just tell me the truth of why you did so, right? Trying to get a HDB. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And don't have girlfriend. Can't mm. find girlfriend there. Mm. Okay la. <laughs> so you need to become a Singaporean. Mm. Then you can own a HDB. Ma. So it's like, wow, to own a HDB, the intention so strong. Ah. Mm -hmm. Why don't you guys do both? Yeah. You have got the privilege. You're still holding a blue IC. You are Malaysian. Ma. And at the same time, you want to get a HDB or you want to invest in Malaysia. You can do both ah, actually. Mm -hmm. So that was actually my... Uh, experience experience yeah. and lesson after the trip right and to think about wow how to customize this kind of portfolio for mm, this mm. different type of category la. Yep, yep, yep. yeah mine was a bit different I went and gave a talk mm. from a very Malaysian perspective la, right mm. because in Singapore they say when interest rate hike yep the rental price will also go up mm. because the installment of the owners uh, will actually affect be mm. affected so they will all cascade down to the tenants mm. and their it? rental HDB is significantly increased yeah so throughout the life like MCO. almost like 60% to two times more I heard MCO time the two bedder you can rent at 3,005 same mm. dollar right now the owner just increased to 5,000 yeah, take yeah, it or yeah. leave it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so uh, that perspective is not applicable in Malaysia because like if our interest rate baru hike ma OPR baru naik mm, 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 mm. so <laughs> yeah <laughs> you want to if you call our tenant to the A, I need to increase your rent uh, take it or leave it he will leave uh, yeah 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 <laughs> go for others not. right yeah because not everybody is as desperate OPR so. increase I go withdraw from my EPF yeah, FSA2 <laughs> yeah. so, so the the entire perspective very different plus everybody knows what to do somewhat because mm -hmm. everything is laid out like okay you uh, not citizen you cannot buy if you PR what you can you what you can Very buy straight. if you are everything is all laid out mm. if you hold there's a cooling period three years you need to pay extra stamp duty if you sell earlier that's a formula to everything and it's very open the stamp duty is crazy yeah it's, it's crazy so a uh, point of view I realised also I just made a video like yesterday night uh, <coughs> we take 90% loan for granted Last time, right? So we just think about it. A lot of I think investors who are just watching this for like we followed the YouTube channel. Mm. By the time the YouTube channel started, it was already two slots of ninety percent. Mm. 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 Last time it was not. Mm. Mm. Last time so back then, my parents were I think sixty seventy. They are financing interest rate was can be ten percent eleven percent. Yeah. So mm. last time was that. Then uh, there was a time also where there was a zero obligity. Mm. There was the IBF scheme. Mm. There was unlimited 90%. Mm. Mm. As long as you can qualify, you buy all you can. Mm. Mm. So that was the property flipping era. Lah. Yeah. Then uh, going to UK, going to Singapore, going to come back, back to Malaysia, I realized that no no not any like all governments don't like property investors. Mm. Mm. Because they try to make it hard lah. Mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Meaning, uh, policy because like we only spoil market one. Mm, mm. We come here, buy, 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 sell, 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 sell. Then all the locals cannot afford. Mm. Then you make all the money out mm. of the infrastructure. Mm. Why? So that's why if you look at Singapore's policy, right, it's very good. Like they should always tell foreigners, right, bye bye, don't come to Singapore. And they even increase the stamp duty to yeah, the yeah, to sixty percent. Huh. So with that, right no one in the right mind mm. will buy a property in Singapore unless it's a super wealthy wealthy one I mm. die I want to go there already mm. okay Th that's why like when I go there then I have this thought we take Malaysia for granted a lot mm. that's uh, these two slots of 90% right, if you don't use it up right what if five years down the road no more mm. now everybody yep. oh. that's my point of view as well la. why don't you invest first in Malaysia, mm. you build a certain equity. Yeah. Or like you mentioned, right, Sean, just now, we can buy property with cash back one, 100% mm, mm, mm. loan, multiple of a 90% yeah. slot. Why yeah. don't you build an equity from there mm. while waiting for your HDB, la, mm, mm, uh, queuing up, la, things like that. You earn a certain portion of money in Malaysia first. Ma. Mm. Then you use whatever you earn to own, you yeah, know, yeah. sell it off, Get but, a certain cash. But but put yourself like 
in the position of uh, like because my brother also works in Singapore. Okay. So my sister in law qualified for uh, HDB, and mm. that's their life's goal. Let's accept it, right? Like not everybody uh, crazy mm. about properties like us, So they will buy one HDB, and Wait, that's all. She's a Malaysian PR. You she's mean? a she's a PR. Okay. okay. So okay. they just got the HDB. Then my brother go over. Then happily ever after already. That's it. Just one HDB. One HDB. So like maybe like three years, five years later, mm. want to upgrade. Mm. Then they can sell and upgrade because mm. HDB prices are very very healthy when yeah. the price hike, yeah. right? If I am them, mm. if I have a HDB already, then I'm working there, but I'm still a Malaysian. Yep. Should I buy a Malaysia property? Mm. Right. Mm. So I think the forex needs to be a part of the conversation, mm. Like you no know, matter what you earn, you bring back to Singapore dollar, right? You need to divide by three. Mm. 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 Right. <laughs> <laughs> you are left with nothing. So does that justify the effort? Does that justify the risk? Does that mm. justify? So based on all stigmas that I've spoke to, like mm. a lot of people think that like, oh Malaysia cannot buy or like, whatever. True, mm. uh, a lot of people got burned. Mm. But then uh, just now we had a conversation with your boss, mm. right? Then uh, that is true. Mm. Means that if you put in twenty five percent upfront capital right then yep. there will be a lot of possibility for to have a better return lah, because yeah, you have yeah, yeah. more money ma. oh, but then mm. in terms of forex risk is very high mm. after you convert everything right so 200,000 sing dollar is 330,000 is a full paid apartment in Malaysia already correct you right? can buy cash uh-uh. ah, but then ah. if you were to sell and bring back right you will lose money instantly mm. because you convert back the whole money right mm. my perspective is it depends on where you want to settle down. Mm, correct. Especially at the first... So, for example, right, those categories where Malaysians just started their work in Singapore, mm. I'm talking about a couple of them is uh, not even three years settled mm, down. Mm, mm. So, technically, they are in terms of their income and their savings, yet to be stable. Mm. Let's take an example. Your living expenses, your commitment, you plus everything, let's say, is ready 2005. Mm. And then you are earning an income of 5000 So the the remaining portion that you can save after you convert back to Malaysia Ringgit, maybe also you can do so in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. So this kind of category, I find that they are struggle, not to say struggle, la, they have just this question mark. Um, let's say right now I fully utilize the 5000 sing dollar in my payslip uh, to invest in Malaysia. Mm. Is that a correct move or not? Mm. Because once, once I do so, I can't own HDB ma, unless mm. I sell off. Uh, yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. I invest in Malaysia mm. and then uh, they are also where those uh, Malaysian PR lah, uh, already have a HDB they are asking should I buy continuously to buy in Singapore mm. or invest back in Malaysia or tap into other country because this batch mm. is already earning yeah, maybe got a like car yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. got an income very good already but mm. to me it's a very personal question lah. if you want to settle in Singapore forever then just stay mm. there lo, right? Mm. but if you have any slight intention mm. of coming back or if you still have families here you'll come over for tourist, tourism mm. come to Penang every year go to Pangko Laut every year <laughs> right then you that's a place where you can spend your ringgit mm. why not right so mm. but anyway uh, I guess that's the perspective that we have which is a very perplexed one there's no right or wrong answer to this mm. it's just our very own small little take on it because we, like, we, it's not like we have a choice lah. Mm. <laughs> Would you go to Singapore if you were? If you're given the opportunity? Wait, this question now. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> he asked in this. <laughs> I will not lah. I will not. not. Mm. I mean, like, like you mentioned lah, uh, unless my another half mm. is based in Singapore mm. or is working in Singapore, then maybe I will consider. Mm. But at this moment, if you're purely thinking about you want to go to Singapore because the conversion currency is better than Malaysia, mm then that's not me lah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm. To me lah, I don't have the answer. Mm, kind of like no answer. Gorek je, cakap je. Uh, <laughs> no, no, because the... Like I look at my brother, right? When he, he is those type that uh, he executes instructions really well. Like mm. if, if, if he's given an instruction, hey, do this, hey, manage this, hey, do this, right? He performs very well. Mm. So with that setting, right? I think Singapore suits him a lot. Because mm. in Malaysia, our working style is a bit different, ma. 
yeah, like yeah. especially when you have like me right I got no rules nothing no guidebook no whatever to mm. follow so it's a free for all kind of market mm. and I enjoy it and I benefit from it lah. so again that's from the working perspective then food wise let's not argue <laughs> that one very very sensitive apparently mm. um, but okay let's say if I want to yep. buy already okay, mm. from a Malaysian working in Singapore yep what should they prepare Malaysia working in Singapore so I treat this one as those where you really just stepping in Singapore for a couple let's say less than five years mm. uh, the in terms of the documentation uh, first one since uh, you just maybe just started your work right uh, whether currently you're on a probation basis mm. or you already gotten as a permanent basis okay so I think the income when you convert back to Malaysia ringgit for those that working in Singapore, right? It's not an issue at all. One. Mm -mm -mm. So it's not so much of qualifying for the loan, uh, but it's re whether is it recognizable? Qualifying for the income, I would say. Okay. So let's say the a situation where currently you are earning a four thousand sing dollar in uh, Singapore. Mm. After you convert back to Malaysia, uh, Malaysia ringgit, right? It's easily also about twelve thousand. So some of the bank they will use uh they call it uh the foreign currency exchange rate that's on a daily basis mm. every day will change one some of the bank they will actually have their own foreign currency rate to convert from mm. sing dollar to malaysian ringgit but they will recognize 100 percent of it lah. ah so this one so for example right uh let's uh, let's not mention a bank for example right ah. uh, take a calculation four thousand sing dollar we do a quick calculation uh, times three just mm. times three some of the bank will actually uh use to times 3.2 or 3.3 since it's changed over on a daily basis right and after that, you need to multiply with another the percentage that you just mentioned. Mm. So some of them, some of the bank will recognize eighty, some of the bank will recognize hundred mm. percent. So easily, I would say if you're earning a four thousand sing dollar, convert back to Malaysia ringgit is already twelve thousand. So the the income, I will not say it's a roadblock already. Mm. As long as you want to invest in Malaysia. Okay. The, the 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 more on the document will be on the compliance issue. So compliance, for example, back in MCO time, right? Mm. You can't come back to Malaysia, but you want to invest, right? And the banker or the credit can't see you face to face for signing things like that. A bit hard. Or oh, it's the logistical things. Ah. Ah. So another category will be the compliance where, especially you are Malaysian, already gotten the PR status there. You mm. want to buy in Malaysia, right? They was like, bank credit sometimes like, are you, you already got a PR, will you be settled down in uh, Singapore? Ah? Mm. I want you to nominate a guarantor lah. To do a joint NEMA that's still residing in Malaysia one for this purchase. Will that affect the loan margin? Loan margin, no. Loan margin <laughs> more uh, loan margin depends on the loan borrower, what's your current secret, how many residential you are holding. Okay, okay, okay. Of course, if you are Malaysian working in Singapore, Malaysian PR working in Singapore, they also look at your uh secret report that's based in Singapore. Mm. So we call what it, it call? CBS. Okay. Credit oh. Bureau Singapore, I think. Uh, uh, CBS. Uh. So CBS is equivalent to our secrets in Malaysia. Okay. So for these two categories, Malaysian working in Singapore or Malaysian PR working in Singapore, the bank credit in Malaysia will look at both of your secrets and CBS one. Mm. Uh, so I would say it's more to the compliance that you need to fulfill rather than your income. Mm. Mm. Okay. Does it mm. matter? Okay. So it first of all is either permanent or temporary so is it full time hmm. or uh, just a part time also matters lah, right uh, so for example are you paid under currently salaried one mm. or it can be self-employed we mm. have also people where they set up business based in mm. Singapore mm. so this one is self-employed I think majority right now is still salaried lah. Mm. salaried in a way are they earning a fixed income there permanent basis fixed income or are you currently earning a commission base in Singapore mm. so there are difference also on the calculation and the guideline so uh, so I think the salary one mm. we, we kind of covered that just now mm. but for commission based one how, mm. how is it the same like Malaysia the different bank will treat it differently lah. some oh. of the bank maybe recognize after the conversion rate multiplied mm. by 3 they will take 50% some maybe they will take up to 70% or 50 to 70 percent correct correct uh, but anyhow if you convert back to malaysia ringgit unless your secrets and cbs has a huge commitment mm. or else income wise you should the pass la, we will say mm -hmm. you, you should fulfill the the criteria on the income okay mm, mm. 
But and that's, that's why even the bank credit guideline they set a minimum salary if you are working in Singapore. So we have got this one. If let's say yeah, right now you're earning a three thousand Sing dollar, mm. certain bank you must earn maximum three thousand Sing dollar only. They let you to apply. Oh wow! They even said that because imagine if you're earning a three thousand Sing dollar, I dare not to say is is. Mm. Yeah, is that considered a lot or, or, or yeah, less? Yeah, yeah. But the criteria on the bank, they even said it minimum two thousand sing dollar, three thousand mm. sing dollar, this like that. Average is minimum two thousand sing dollar. Then, uh, do they like apply from any banks? Like, okay, so mm. usually when they buy developed properties here, they will go through the panel bank, ma. Yep. Mm. In terms of installment payment, right? Mm. Like, can they use their own foreign bank to? Foreign bank in Malaysia, for example, Stanchart, uh-huh. Alliance, right, things like that. Yep. As long as the property that you are buying, mm. the end financer, they are the end financer, mm. uh, the foreign, uh, the foreign bank, you can still use it. No issue. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, in okay. fact, the margin, right, because you are you are still a Malaysian, mm. even though you are Malaysian PR, you still holding your blue IC. You are mm. still Malaysian, ma. So whatever rules in terms of the margin of finance still follow back. Malaysian, Malaysian working in Malaysia. Oh, ah. so it's still two 20% percent commercial is seventy. Yes. No. Um. Mm. So that's why mm. the question would be why you want to choose right if you got the chance to actually you can own in Malaysia and Singapore. It's just that the strategy. Mm-hmm. Which one to buy first? How can you utilize? Uh, with but, the capital gain. But in how com- like mm. do you know how do they check? How do they check in a way? Like like do mm. C, like okay do CBS mm. talk to Secris? We were we were okay when you actually submit your loan right you have we, of course in Malaysia we already can pull out your Secris ma. Mm. For your CBS report we will ask you to either you can buy in uh, I think POS in Singapore or you can uh, download online also. Mm. We will need that report when you submit the loan. Okay. So the bank credit will look at your both your Secris and your CBS. Okay. Ah. If I have a HDB already, yep. I want to buy a Malaysia property. Mm. Do the banks care? Mm. I cannot buy. Uh, you can buy as long as the income qualified, like we were saying. Oh, but so, you don't. You buy, but mm. not because like I got HDB already. You cannot let me no. buy. It's just that some of the bank, when they see your CBS report, of course the commitment it can be you have a credit card. You mm. can also have a personal loan in Singapore, ma. In your CBS report, so mm. this one we say your commitment is Singapore. Okay. Okay. And let's say you own a condo or mm. HDB in Singapore, and it appeared in your CBS, right? So which means you already have, especially if residential, mm. your one residential quota is ready use, ma. Oh, so they calculate also. So the magic here is that some of the bank uh. they only take your commitment in CBS. They are not looking at the housing loan commitment and the quota, but some of the bank they will take all mm. and calculate your CBS commitment, your CBS commitment, and the CBS, your margin of finance things like that lah. Mm. You really have one residential, two residential, three residential. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. So the bank. Hmm, this is so mm. interesting. Hmm. So when you apply for Malaysia's property, I will know what you have in Singapore. Yep. Right. CBS can see everything. Uh, uh, but Singapore government don't really know what is in your secret. Uh. If let's say you're talking about Malaysian want to buy a own a HDB there, right? Uh, will they look at the secret in your Malaysia? Secret. Um, okay, this is actually a very hard question, right? Because. <laughs> uh, very grey, very grey. <laughs> if Singapore's government watching this, right, we are doomed. <laughs> and this is the one of the hard questions I mm. get from the audience, right? Uh, during mm. my work trip there, uh, she's like, "Hey, Rina, I already gotten a house uh, back in KL. Mm. Okay, before I came to Singapore, mm. and this guy is already in Singapore for ten years already. Mm. Okay, so right now, Memang really want to own a HDB, mm. but because he already own a house in KL, mm. and he is actually struggle to sell it off mm. <laughs> because he." The upon a time ten ten years ago bought it at a wrong entry price. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. something where he bought it at one thousand per square foot. Today can only he want to sell at six hundred also cannot sell that kind. Hmm. Joh lah. I don't. Very obvious one, no man. Don't want to mention. So, uh. um, 
uh, he, he is asking, Rina, how can I let go this property if, let's say, today I'm struggle to dispose ready? Mm. I don't have any siblings. Mm. You cannot change. I mean, you cannot uh, do the ownership uh, trans- transfer, transfer to uh. your siblings. You know siblings. Ma. My parents, uh, no income already. No pay slip. Mm. How to Ayoh. transfer, right? Mm. So I was like... Give. Mm, very hard. Uh. You, can, you want to sell 600 per square foot. So no people want to buy. Uh, because right now, yeah, that yeah, yeah. property... Selling about 400 plus per square foot You can still buy mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay So After all the study And things like that I realised Okay If let's say today HDB is based on ownership Right mm. So as long as the, <coughs> H, uh, the, the As long as your SPA Is without your name one mm. You don't own any property ma, Indirectly the definition mm. You know whispering is not going to help <laughs> <laughs> just to put it I'm not sure whether this one can be out. No, it's like oh, wow. We will figure it out right? We will figure so it out So you can still remain your name as a loan borrower mm. But the SPA You just transfer as a gift to your parents like You continuously to serve the loan mm. SPA A and B mm. Loan B, let's say Can SPA, we do it? Is, is it very we, hard? We can, certain bank Certain bank you just Okay, say, oh. this, this is Rina's trick, right? <laughs> She uh, works with multiple banks all the time. That's why, like, it's not right to just publicly announce which bank can do. In fact, which bank can do, right? It's so, a third party loan, now We call it. Uh, so, mm. so again, we will put her the uh, Instagram account there. You all go catch out her, okay? Because even also, I don't know. So I will catch out her on a daily basis. Hey, which bank can? Which bank? No, can no, no. So uh. I have got these thoughts. Like, okay, um, if we do so, right? Because indirectly, you can't say that this fella own a property overseas. Mm. Because his name is not in the SPA, ma. but but of course um, we can also like uh, uh, kind of like uh, justify to say he bought for his parents' own stay. Do they buy that? You don't uh, know. We we are not sure. Mm. So I don't. Of course I don't want to like. Because secrets comes out, ma. Yeah, yeah, secrets. But you are just a loan borrower, ma. You don't own that, mm. ma. You buy for your parents' own stay, ma. You can justify that. So it's it's mm, also rely uh. back on the guideline like, on it's HDB. Not, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. How 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 deaf they actually mm. how, how how they check? Um, I think the yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So it's like <clears throat> okay, if this is something that we can do, right? So mm. many things you want to. Buy first in how, Singapore. How soon? How soon can you know? <laughs> I, I think because this will change the whole game. Uh, okay, I think, that? so I think the first game, mm. if I'm, uh, if I'm a PR working in Singapore, mm. if, if mm. I'm my brother, yep. right? If I'm my brother, I will use my income to join with his, or mm. I buy under his name, mm. right? Mm. So we sign agreement. Mm. I don't care whether you're brother or not. We need to sign agreement, right? Then we will own multiple properties together, lah. Mm. If seventy percent, also never mind, mm. because I got money, ma. I got mm. everything times three, ma. Mm. Just to know, just we need to know which property to buy, lah. Yep. Like the, the access one. to the deals, lah. So if it's uh those kind of properties that we are buying under like with huge discounts or whatsoever, mm. right? Then we basically just need to qualify for loan. Mm. Don't even need capital, ma. Mm. Correct. So that's all good news. Then just now you throw the curveball where it's like no siblings, one. Hmm. If that can be done like in a third party loan yeah. format, right? It opens up it's all really doors, like, right? Wow. <laughs> should we try? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So like for those who want to try, right? The uh should we contact Rina? I don't know, so I'm very curious. Uh. Because I might do that for my brother. We have any H- <laughs> HDB owners. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, my brother no, haven't got oh, HDB. Yet. <laughs> hey, work harder lah, we. <laughs> okay, so mm. then that's for Malaysians working in Singapore, lah, right? Whether is it PR or not, right? Mm, mm. So the I think the salary part, the banks income. banks are pretty familiar with it, especially for those banks in Sing, uh, Johor, right? They have processed all banks these. Banks in Johor, banks in Malaysia. <laughs> Yeah, I think because last time I worked in Johor, ma, uh, uh. Singaporean buyers are very, very common. Only recently, right, I went to the project I bought in Setia Alam. I bought a townhouse, ma. Mm. Then I go in Sambat, see the semi D, the cluster semi D right in front. Mm. I want to know who's my neighbor. Then the, the sales staff, hey, the show unit finished already. Want to come and see? And I go and see, lo. Apparently, the corner lots are selling for 2.3 million. Uh. Okay. Which is like crazy price yeah. la. So uh. like I'm also happy like because 
that gives more capital appreciation potential for my property. Mm, mm. I think I bought the cheapest unit in the Taman. Mm, <laughs> mm. Be, the, be the cheapest person in a rich man area, right? Faisal uh, share. Uh, yeah, uh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Che, okay. Che, <laughs> okay uh, what was surprising is a lot of Singaporeans buyer who bought those corner lots. So there were like corner lots and there were intermediates. Intermediates were still got units. Lah, but the corner lots, right, almost all kena sapu. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then mm-hmm. like 2.3 million one, almost sold out. Eh. The 1.8, 1.9 million one still got stock. Because the minimum requirement is 2 million for f- foreign. Selengo. Uh, for ah, Selengo, ah, ma, for yep. foreign ownership. Ma. So like, I think the rich people in Singapore mm. already know how to play the game. Man. They are buying things that they cannot have back home. In Singapore. Yeah, because I think the same unit will cost like four or five million in to in own a lender in Singapore, I do I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so so I met million, seven, seven I actually met a person who actually lives in the semi D in Singapore. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so like wow, very rich lah. Very hard lah to own uh, a lender very, in Singapore very, very unless rich. you anyway, uh. uh so for Singaporeans are the documents the same? Singaporeans, I would say first one, uh it makes a big difference. I mean, let's talk about it lah. Before you, uh, before you have the uh, planning to convert, <laughs> become uh, a Singaporean, uh, right? Uh, uh. As long as you still holding a blue IC, you still have two ninety percent. I mean, you you can still follow the Malaysian guideline. Mm. But once you already converted, become a Singaporean, you no longer holding blue IC mm. Last time actually, you can still own both one blue uh. IC and then the Singapore ID. Right now, cannot already one. Mm. They once you converted, become a Singaporean. They take back your, your blue IC, the Malaysian IC. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So, which means first one, if let's say currently you are Singaporean, you want to invest in Malaysia, right? You are considered a foreigner, like we say. Mm. Foreigner. So, need to follow the foreigner guideline. Mm. But of course, Singaporean buying in Malaysia compared to other foreigner buying in Malaysia is so much better like, in terms of the margin. You still can get 80 to 85%. Does it matter? Not so bad. Ma. In their local bank or foreign bank? Uh, local we have got few that at least still can do 85 mm. so not bad uh, mm. but the loan tenure maximum is 30 years slightly shorter, shorter compared 5 years, five years, five years uh. Uh, so if you want to uh, play the currency game so nothing uh. mm. but, yeah. but the interest rates is it mm. the same interest rates is the same it really depends on the property track the property price that you are purchasing mm. second one is of course your overall credit profile mm. whether uh, you CBS take care of again, your uh. secrets and CBS things like that mm, 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 and uh, the third one will be more on uh, how long you already in uh, Singapore you know your your history of your employment things like that uh, pretty then, much the same la. yeah it's the same it's just that the margin of finance the loan tenure uh, uh, slightly make a difference uh. okay mm, mm. so between a uh, PR and uh, Singaporean, the difference is you are uh, one is still a Malaysian, one is a Singaporean. Uh, one is a foreigner? Uh? Of course, uh, Singaporean, you're buying in Malaysia, you need to fulfill just now the guideline. Uh. Buying in KL, 1 million. Mm. Buying in Selangor, uh, minimum yeah. 2 million. But if you are Malaysian working in Singapore, right, mm. you want to buy something 500,000 also can with cash back. Yeah. So. I didn't say one. Uh. <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh. Mm. So that's, that's what I was like. How can I do a portfolio for those Malaysian working in Singapore so that one day you can buy or own a HDB with let's say 20% down payment, mm. right? Let's say 100,000. You can actually, using the equity that you built in Malaysia mm. or using the cash mm. that you can get in Malaysia to own one HDB there mm. without touching your CPF mm. or mm. without touching your savings. Because not to say that today you start to work in mm. Singapore, you can directly get a HDB, ma. correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. You mm. might need how many years to build mm. the savings uh, I'm actually and record. Like. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say take about let's say five years, right? How much you can do five years if you are let's say you start to invest in Malaysia first? Mm. Yeah, and then you sell off whatever that you earn in Malaysia, and then by that time maybe you are able or eligible for HDB. Okay, I'm actually asking for on behalf of my own brother already. <laughs> Uh, so like if it's that's my thoughts lah. Okay, you need to be first confirmed mm. f- in terms of uh, employment first lah, right? Yep. That's that's the preferred. Then six months pay. Make slip. sure you don't apply anything if let's say you are under the probation basis. No. Okay. Probation. I don't suggest uh, those that 
you know, you just started your work in Singapore, especially not even six months, mm. even though your income fulfill, uh, try be patient a little bit. Mm-hmm. Build at least one year lah. Mm. Employment history there. Yeah, in the in the meantime, book first law. <laughs> I don't say <laughs> book the property first because you can hold the booking one ma. Yeah. Right. So yes. employment history, if you have got a background of at least a uh, one year employment history, I would say okay. Is, is that a minimum or is like six months enough? Six months me no la, I, I, I'll say better to be one year la. Six months, just in case who knows, you try this bank and then got rejected. Oh, then it appears with the uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Do we mm. have? But we can always, we can always actually, uh, what to say? Uh, we can always justify to say that, hey, before this in Malaysia, let's say you work with mm. Petronas oil mm. and gas, you know, it's a MNC company, and right now you assign to Singapore another oil and gas company. Then mm. it makes sense the whole okay. story. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, so if let's say you just a fresh grad, and then you go to Singapore to work, and with only a six month history mm. employment, then it's quite hard. Uh, so judging based on this conversation, it's not difficult at all to apply la, for a loan in Malaysia. In fact, if you ask me over the past, I mean, talking about uh, have my you processed own client, before? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, just go a lot. Uh. I process it since I see from 2015. Let's uh, talk about I don't those. do 005, so old. <laughs> 2015. Uh. I process it all the way until today. La. Of course, you see during the MCO, how tight is the mm. calculation and guideline. And then right now, wow, everything like Can. so favorable, mm. so easy one. Last time, a mm. certain bank, you can only apply if your SING dollar is minimum 5,000 SING dollar. They even wow. said that during MCO time. But now a general... 2,000 to 3,000 SING dollar. But again, it differs from bank to bank. La. Yep, correct. Mm. Mm. So I would say it's so much easier already right now. What's the common... Mis- like like rejection reasoning. Rejection uh, short short uh, employment uh, history. Yeah, that's too uh, impatient. Uh. Yeah, and then one thing is try to have a good savings proof. Uh. Why I say six months better not to apply. It's really also depends. You know how much you can save during the six months of your work, right? Because savings Sa- proof is quite important. Savings proof. Imagine not uh, today you are savings proof. Uh, that's very yeah. new. Because. Imagine today you are Malaysian working in Singapore, you're earning a, after conversion back to Malaysia ringgit, let's say 20,000 Malaysia ringgit. Mm, mm. Okay, quite a bit. Ma. And then we see eh, your savings, because they don't have EPF. Mm. Then you see eh, your savings, you earn 20,000 Malaysia ringgit, but you, nothing much, or your savings proof is not strong. Then the bank They also credit, look into that. Uh. Most uh, they, they will look into that. Uh, Provided, I think the, the first front criteria are not working really, then that's the... Yeah. Then we see their savings oh. pro- eh, also borderline. Or, then the confidence level, they was either slash your margin if they still want to give you a loan. La. Mm. Uh, from 90%, they slash to 80 But well, that's something that they don't look at Malaysians one, right? Uh, if let's say Malaysian working in Malaysia, if let's say you are self-employed or full-time commission earner, they also look at that. They will request your oh, this is the first time I know this. Wow. Ah, uh, some of the cases, case to case, if they see eventually, oh, show me some saving proof. Then uh, okay. Then if it's uh, I deduct it from mm. my main income into a separate bank, mm. Deduct your. So like, okay, the mm. way I save money is I will tax myself. Mm. So every month, if I got a salary like X amount, okay, let's say ten thousand, right? Ten thousand, I'll uh, I'll put in one thousand into this bank as saving. Mm. Mm. Right, but in the in the transaction, it's just a minus or debit over only. Mm. So, do I need to print then the other savings proof? They were you 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 can show in a form of your if let's say you do have CPF mm. or in Malaysia EPF your EPF account uh, one and two, mm. and then your FD or let's say Malay you can show ASB tapung haji or any form of savings in your savings account and current account. <coughs> that one is considered your savings proof. Mm. Mm. Or those where, I think, not sure whether I mentioned before, high net worth. Oh, yeah. Once you hit a 1 million net worth, right, even though your DSR burst, you can still apply one because we can package you as a high net worth as long as you can accumulate 1 million Malaysia ringgit. So that one, some of the property, if let's say you already built a certain equity, right, mm-hmm. we check the bank valuation, we minus your loan amount. Mm. That is your equity and that's your assets also, your net worth. That's my next strategy though. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
So oh. like okay, but okay, and that that's not, not nothing to do with the Singapore audience, right? Mm. <laughs> but wow, so many games to play. Uh. But ultimately, uh, I think the savings proof one mm. it's <coughs> one in terms of signing, right? Mm. Is it very like? Is there e signing processes already? Yeah. So, so once your loan approved. You can actually sign your letter offer through uh, digital signing lah, e-signing lah, mm. and just email you uh, through email verification things like that. But uh, as long as you able to come back to Malaysia to open your bank account for the loan disbursement, uh. then you sign the physical copy of the letter offer. That upon a time, no issue. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. In, in, yeah. In Malaysia, there's this every loan approved, you need to open a savings account. Yeah, right? yeah. Then they give you a credit card. So of course, some of the banker. Card. Even uh. make an effort. I go down to JB. Uh. That side there. Oh wow! Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Can we meet at somewhere? You know, midpoint JB or things like that to sign lah. Uh. Also can. How is mid? I don't midpoint is black. Yeah, yeah. But, uh. but okay. Yeah. So mm. so like, mini is almost certain that there will need be one physical mm. trip lah mm. to to Malaysia lah. Mm. Right? Yep. Mm. Or is Correct. it you just meet at City Square, join JB lah. <laughs> yeah. So hmm. Mm. Interesting. So not that challenging in terms of documentation. But mm. again, I think we can just I think she will prepare a checklist, right? Just like what's required. Mm. Mm. And this is pretty much the general requirements of all banks really, right? Mm. Does um, it does correct. it does it make a difference if I were to apply Maybank Singapore? I just said the name. Anyway, uh, versus Maybank Malaysia. Is there a difference in rates? Oh, uh, this one ah, uh, unless currently you have got a certain relationship or mm. networking with, let's say, Maybank Singapore, right? Mm. You are holding a privileged a money, uh. account or whatsoever. Then maybe you get a better interest rate, lah, things like mm, that, lah. Mm, 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 mm. But or else, it doesn't make any difference, ah, because eventually it's still Maybank you are you mm. you applying with, ah. Uh, so okay. um, documentation wise if let's say you are salaried one fixed income earner your latest three months of your payslip latest three months of your bank statement and then uh, if currently you already holding a PR there's this thing we call it the NOA notice of assessment which mm. is equivalent to our borang BE the mm. tax uh, income tax uh. and then uh, the other side another one is your CPF which is equivalent to our EPF here Mm. And then of course your ID, things like that, and one more I think which is uh, makes a bit of difference compared to Malaysian working in Malaysia is your employment confirmation letter. For mm. those working overseas, we need this employment confirmation letter which is from your employer. To Despite state that, like mm. I, how long I work really. Correct. Well, I uh, work eight years really. Hey, can you confirm me again? Uh? Yeah, yeah. Because some uh, if let's say uh, even with with this employment confirmation letter. Some of the bank will still like check whether you are still there. Or they will call the HR. Yeah, yeah. They will call like that, you know, landline whatsoever. If they can't reach, uh, they will say, it's, it's quite hard to do the employment conf- uh, uh, verification one. Mm. So some of the bank with the employment confirmation uh, letter, they treat, okay, look, jalan. Mm. Some, they want to do a call to verify it. Some, uh, through email also can't. They don't prefer, mm. you know, you things like that. Physical person. Yeah, correct. So unless you are telling me that you are working in a listed company, mm. okay, where the bank credit actually can email you directly, you as a purchaser, with the company, let's say, dot com dot my, using the company email address, mm. then you reply yes, I am bum bum bum, then consider also verify already. Mm. Ah, so this part slightly uh, different compared to uh, Malaysian working local here. Uh, other than that, CBS is compulsory. CBS mm. so uh, the purchaser must either download online or buy it I think in they call it POS mm-hmm. post uh, then okay. submit together with uh, other documents in this case mm. so it's pretty much similar to the process of Malaysian buying just that everything is in a Singaporean version correct mm-hmm. and some I, I think some quite uh, not, not to say hard case lah, where the payslip is actually issued in a form not in English <laughs> Oh, because uh, MNCs, uh, because uh, in other uh, small companies. In other language. Like Mandarin uh, or, uh, uh, or Thai. Or uh, German. Or German. Uh. Uh. Wow, German. So. Oh, my job, Atas. Why is it German become This will be a bit hard because you were required to translate it first and verify and then to submit accordingly. 
Uh, Anyone can transcribe it, or it must be a certified translator. You can ask your HR to translate it, and uh. then uh, they certify it, lah. Or you can do outside a translator, and then somebody must certify it also. Mm. Yep. Mm. Wow, so that this one is, new? Mm. is slightly different. Uh, other than other than that, uh, try to pledge more savings proof, lah. Mm. Mm. So by pledging more saving proof, it just helps approval, mm. or it helps also interest rate. I I would say approval in terms of th- th- you don't give them a chance to slash your margin lah. Mm. Uh, uh, eventually they are. I mean, overall it's more to the confidence level of the bank credit on you as a purchaser. That's it. Okay. Uh, so that's why I will prefer those cases where you already build a record over one year period, right? Be mm. in your savings or be in your employment status. Mm. Then only you go to apply. It will be a lot safer in this case. Mm. Very direct. I thought it was going to be something very complicated, but not really. Uh, the more complicated one will be the decision to purchase. I right? would say the the decision and the strategy lah. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, how can you own both in Malaysia and also Singapore? Let's let's say target in a ten years period. Mm. Suddenly uh. you have this benefit by having a sibling. <laughs> 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 I suddenly just realized, right? Oh, <laughs> well, having a sibling, then like a my kid just not one person. Mm, having another mm. brother or sister might be very helpful in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Who would ever thought that? No lah, this is just me trying to. Maximize more. Mm, mm. I guess that's pretty much it, right? Mm. We will be going to Singapore. I hope, right? Going to Singapore very, very more uh, frequent. Mm. Uh, meet up some of you all again. Uh, because I think, in based on your experience, a lot of people are trying to buy, right? But they are just like not sure about the processes and the locations and the specs of what they are buying, lah, right? In Malaysia, uh, I mean, can I buy better or can I earn better in Malaysia compared to I own a HDB lah? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, since HDB, let's say the rental is so good, performing mm-hmm. according to 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 what what I heard, and then uh, because in Singapore, if you're talking about HDB, I would say it's more to the home ownership lah. Mm-hmm. You and it's very sensitive, ah. Like I I spoke to several Singaporeans. Again, they do not encourage, uh. Investment oriented conversations around HDB one. Mm, mm. They are they are very sensitive to this. Mm, mm. So suddenly, if this video is gonna block, right, then you all know lah. <laughs> but I I I heard that's the message that a lot of YouTubers got it also. Mm, mm. So you do not uh, encourage uh, investment using a welfare product. Yeah, yeah. Which Same school to here in yeah, Malaysia. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, la. exactly. Ah, ah. So, but this is not Singaporeans that we are talking about, la, right? These are Malaysians working over there. Uh, but, yeah. But, mm. but I think this episode is just trying to just enlighten those who are working there, trying mm, to mm. make ends meet. Uh, it's not that difficult. And uh, if you have siblings, cousins, whoever, I think it's still possible to play the game. But mm, the mm. right person I think let her Figure out the Third party loan thing If that is possible Right Oof, all the, mm. the entire game Is going to change mm, mm. And if you guys Have any Further Questions You can just Comment below mm. Or you can just Go kacau her Directly at her Instagram I'll just put there Right And I guess Is there anything You want to add on uh, You want to talk About the strategy Or not I think strategy uh, It's a uh, I think it's a Better very it's a very different because you already covered in I think your Singapore episode right about the stamp duty how to own a HDB you know things like that and then the, the thing to is in Malaysia. the thing is like it changes mm. so strategies change in accordance to policies yeah so when there's a new policy there's a new game rule change right then the strategies must change as well mm. uh, that's why mm, I am not very sure how to play the game yet mm. so that's why maybe you need to talk to your boss <laughs> for me it's the I mean since we are talking about the financing and the bank guideline right the main difference will be um, to, to, to get a loan if let's say you are Malaysian working in Malaysia or Malaysian working in Singapore you want to invest in Malaysia on the financing side to get the loan it can be zero down ma, or even a 100% loan mm-hmm. for first time home buyer yeah. Uh, uh, but in Singapore, you can't do that 
Mm-hmm. You need uh, 20 to 25 down, down payment at the first place and then mm. stamp duty of uh, 5, 5% easily. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so I would say the financing in Malaysia is so much easier to play around compared to if you st- first start mm-hmm. to invest in Singapore first. Yep, yep. Yeah, so this, this this makes a difference and it's also so much friendly to invest in Malaysia. You get a certain cashback where you can't do so in Singapore. Mm. Yeah. But again, like just now when I mentioned, it just boils down back to the agenda. La. You tell mm. me how good, how good also, right? Mm. I don't want to come back. Mm. 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 Right. So I just don't want to come back. I just don't like it here. <laughs> so yeah, I have really got, I yeah, spoke to yeah, someone like, I don't like it. PL. It's not safe. Mm. Uh, um. up to you lo, mm. right? to me no right no wrong mm. to me if you are just happy with one HDB you are fine then good for you but uh, I think we will do a separate episode all together on the strategy part because I'm, I'm still figuring out actually like the problem of foreigners trying to figure out the KL game is there's not enough information available a mm. lot of things that we know uh, are not available online one. Mm. And you're not sure whether the online one that you are reading is genuine or yeah, not. Uh, la. <laughs> is that a fact yeah, or not? Yeah, so, so, <laughs> like, how nice if I got a blue tick right, right now. <laughs> or is that Twitter blue tick, like Instagram blue tick, then it's like a verified source. Uh, that, I think that's the main challenge for a lot of uh, mm. foreigners trying to invest, figure out KL or so. Then there's just too many very top mm, the, mm, the whole mm. online space everybody trying to sell the own listing that they have right then we haven't even figured out sub sale yet and things like that mm. so if that's because I think a lot of road shows are conducted in uh, Singapore also mm. like we see a lot of property developers all bring their product you mean Malaysia products. developer uh. selling Malaysia property in Singapore mm, mm, mm. road show okay mm. yeah so I think there definitely is a demand for it just that uh, the access to deals becomes a very very important mm. discussion in this like okay I, I know KL property can buy buy which one yeah right yeah. then uh. like oh, uh, 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 see which one pay me commission no? right yeah, so yeah. Like, <laughs> that's, that's a common uh, agenda based mm. advice mm. so mm. maybe we can do this in a different episode all together but it's going to be uh, but once you unlock that right once the belief system is there, the strategy is there. Free mm. for all. You can buy basically anything. What you don't even have to buy new project. You can buy uh sub sale really, ma. Mm. Because sub sale mm. is still going to be cheaper, ma. Mm. Mm. Right. Mm. So, I guess that's all. Right. It's going to be a very interesting series. Right? Solid and quick. I think. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, because uh, like after speaking to real life people in. Uh, Singapore then you really like oh it's like that uh, or that's the sentiment around right because when we think it's all flowery it's all whatever mm, right mm. we think that 4,000 is a lot not really because we convert everything right but their day to day is still struggling one mm, mm, if mm. I were to buy another property in Malaysia I eat what wow true also ma, right so so that's also a very important insight that we need to cover more mm, mm. and then I think the next the meet and greet in Singapore, the physical event. I don't know we, when yet. We, we can we can uh, understand uh, better uh, yeah, in yeah, this yeah, case. Yeah, yeah. Mm, so mm. if that does happen, so I think it's a, it's more of a exchange like what you guys are doing here, like what's the yeah, salary. Yeah. I think that gives us a little bit more. Maybe we assume people make five thousand. Mm, mm. Right, I assume my brother make five thousand. <laughs> I think he I don't think he makes No la, right? Definitely More la. I, I don't know I, I, I really don't know uh, <coughs> Then uh. like What's the tax system like How much mm. they What's the clean Net mm. uh, Salary And things mm. like that Because mm. all those Plays out ma. Mm. Mm. Right, just like Yeah you. CBS report And CPF mm. Wonderful You should have a look Their CBS report How they Categorize every single one Later. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah. I, anyway I guess that's all I'm like, probably mumbling really. mm. But uh do uh, stay tuned for whatever we're trying to do within this mortgage series because now I think the Malaysian series that we kind of covered a lot really but the Singapore side of things we are still trying to assist our friends who is mm. working there la, because there's a lot of potential to be unlocked yeah. once you have decided what you want 
Yeah. Whether and you want to go stay there or you want to come back, right? Well, a lot of potential to unlock. Yeah. Mm. And I think the question lah will, I mean, from your audience, right? It will also lead to like, hey, this one, what can I do? What will be the uh, yeah, next yeah, yeah. solution, right? So mm. I'm trying to figure out more and more on this, mm. uh, especially to few of the corporate client and also that group of people that I met because different really have different type of question one. Mm. There's something new for me to explore also. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's all for today. Thank you very much. See you guys on the next one. Stay tuned. We will most probably announce the events when we set the down the date in my IG account. So do follow my IG as well. Pushing my own IG account in my own channel. <laughs> okay. Ciao. Bye. Bye.